My name is John Edwards. It is my good fortune to be Vice President of Enrollment and Student Services at this wonderful university, University of Texas Pan American. I want to welcome you to the induction ceremony for our new class of Pillars of Success. This is our fourth class of outstanding alums whom we have honored in our visitor center. Ranging from persons like our current Congressman Rubin Hinojosa to actor Valente Rodriguez, who, if you may remember, was and is George Lopez's sidekick on the George Lopez Show. These were in our first group of inductees. Inducted in our 2007 group were those including Army Major General William Garrison, who was commander of forces in the campaign against Mogadishu, a, cam a campaign that became the subject of a movie, Black Hawk Down. General Garrison, a 1966 graduate, was portrayed in that movie by Sam Shepard. And Lucius B. Jackson, Olympic gold medalist who played on the national championship NAIA basketball team for Pan American and went on to a stellar career with the NBA Philadelphia 76ers. A truly outstanding group of people and just a sample of many outstanding alums who have come through the halls of UTPA. Since its emergence, its inception as a community college in 1927 and its emergence as a university in 1971, up to the present day when just recently Forbes magazine listed UTPA as the 32nd best public university in the nation and the third best public university in the state of Texas. We began this Pillars of Success program in 2002, almost immediately after opening this visitor center. We keep the pillars up, the panels up, for a period of two years because we want our visitors and our students to know that this university has produced outstanding graduates. And for our students, these Pillars of Success, including the ones we're honoring this evening, stand as role models whose paths other students will want to follow. The other reason we leave the pillars up for two years is because two times a year we, have, we also select an exhibit. This spring exhibit is called Masters of the Night, the true story of bats. Now we're not saying that uh, this vice president has gone batty or that the university is headed, headed that way. We, we'll, we'll just say we're flying high. But this will be our 11th exhibit since we opened the Visitor Center in 2002. And to date, more than 200,000 visitors have viewed these exhibits along with our pillars of success, our role models. So we use this exhibit hall to encourage our own student through the pillars and, we, and to encourage school children through both the pillars of success and with the exhibit. But we're here this evening to honor our new inductees as pillars of success, persons selected by a university-wide committee because of outstanding contributions, contributions they have made to society, the university, and to their fields of endeavor. For the next step, the presentation of the honorees, I am pleased to turn the podium over to and welcome our new president, Dr. Robert Nelson. Dr. Nelson is our eighth president and comes to UTPA after a distinguished career in educational leadership, scholarship, and community service. He's a literature and philosophy scholar, experienced administrator, award-winning professor, published writer, and author. But Dr. Nelson, who comes to Texas by way of Montana ranch country, will tell you he's just a cowboy at heart. <laughs> but now, because he has come to lead UTPA, he can claim to be just an old cow hen from the Rio Grande who learned to ride and rope before he learned to stand, citing the popular Johnny Mercer song of many years ago, I might point out. Dr. Nelson earned both his bachelor's and master's degree in political, political science from Big, Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah, 
and his PhD from the Committee on Social Thought at the University of Chicago. His PhD fields of specialization are modern literature, modern philosophy, and modern political theory. Please help us welcome our new president, Dr. Robert Nelson. Actually, the truth is I learned how to milk a cow before I learned how to <laughs> rope a ride or anything like that because dad needed the cows milked. Thanks, John, and good evening to all of you out here tonight. This is a real honor to the honorees up here, to you who are, we welcome you back. This is your alma mater. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of this night. Thank you for doing what you've done for all of the students here. It is a real honor to be able to announce the, and to introduce to you the honorees tonight. The first, unfortunately, is posthumous. But we recognize and we salute tonight Gustavo de la Vigna. Some of the de la Vigna family members are here tonight. Could you all raise your hands if you're here? Okay. It's very important. <laughs> His daughter, Miss Dina Isa de la Vigna, is on stage. Gustavo de, de la Vigna earned his Bachelor of Arts degree from Pan Am when it was just Pan Am University back in 1963. He was an Edinburgh uh, citizen and was grown, grew up here and majored in physical education. And he was a physical education teacher in the local area until 1970 when he was accepted into the Border Patrol. And you will see some of the Border Patrol officers out here tonight. He taught Spanish in the agency's training in Georgia, and he grew up in the ranks until he became a senior deputy of the El Paso sector, then the San Diego sector, and then the Western Regional Director. His trajectory was always on the move, always up, until 1997 when he was appointed the chief of the Border Patrol. And he was the first Mexican-American to ever achieve that. He remained in that post until his retirement in 2004, and during that time, he completely changed what the U.S. Border Patrol was doing. One of the things that he did was deterrence policies, okay? Most, most notably, an initiative called the Border Safety Initiative in 1998. That initiative did public service announcements on both sides of the borders warning about the dangers and educating people about what would happen with illegal crossings and the like. He also deployed the Border Patrol in rescues. Thousands of people were dying as they crossed the border. He took the time to make sure that people could survive and take care of them in the humanitarian way that we should all act in all times of our life. He saved thousands of people. Chief de la Vigna was nominated and chosen the pillar of success early last semester. Unfortunately, he passed away. He was, in early October, he was in Europe on a consulting trip and we lost him. And it's a shame. However, tonight, his daughter is here. And his daughter's here to accept the honor. Ms. de la Vigna. Good evening. It is such an honor to be here tonight as a proud daughter of one of the honorees. First of all, I would like to congratulate all the other honorees tonight for their accomplishments, as well as their families. My father accomplished so much in his lifetime. And I am proud to say that his journey started here at Pan American. Well, it was called Pan American back then. My, never, my father never forgot his roots. 
and he instilled the importance of education in his children and his grandchildren. In our home, our family knew Gustavo de la Vina as a pillar of success. But thanks to the University of Texas Pan American, my father will be known as a pillar of success to our great community. I know my father is up in heaven right now, smiling down upon us, and he is proud of this award. Thank you very much. We have a special honor for you to keep, and thank you very much, and thank you to your father. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. This afternoon, I got a special honor. I got to meet Dr. Dana M. Gonzalez. She's a 1998 graduate of the University of Texas Pan Am. And she's got a special story. And I have words here that I'm supposed to read tonight, but I'm not going to read because her family's out here. Because of a counselor that she had in high school, she decided that she was going to enter into UT Pan Am. At the time, she was pregnant. She decided that she was going to enter into the medical program. And she was worried about it, because she was worried, what if they found out? Because she was single. And her counselor told her to wear baggy clothes Okay? And go do the interview. And the whole time she was there, as she was worrying, and she was from Alamo, and her family had, was financially challenged, and it was not an easy life. And she had attended a special school here, the South Texas High School for Health Professionals. But because of that, as an unwed mother, she went and entered in that program. And she ended up becoming a doctor. And she is now a doctor in OBGYN at Victoria. And she is the only Mexican-American, the only Hispanic, the only Spanish-speaking OBGYN doctor in Victoria. OK? And she has a 15-year-old son who is going to take pre-calculus and calculus so that he can get into engineering at UT Pan Am, OK? More than that, because of what she did, her two sisters went on to become nurses and nurse practitioners because they knew they had to do it. And now her dad is going back to college, OK? Dr. Dana M. Gonzalez is a pillar of success for 2010 and forever. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good evening, and I'd like to say thank you um, for ev to everyone who helped me along my journey. It was a journey, and it was a long, a long journey, 12 years. and. Um, but with, if it wasn't for my family, their prayers, the people I had guiding me through, I had great professors, wonderful professors from the University of Texas Pan American who helped me and guided me and made me very competitive, competitive enough to do well in my studies and to do well in my career. Um, if it wasn't for the University of Texas Pan American, uh, I don't know, we, for my undergrad, I don't know what I would have done if I would have made it on. Um, so I just want to say thank you very much. Our next honoree, Dr. Anil Menon, couldn't be here with us tonight. And actually, that's quite a sign that he can't be here with us tonight. Because he's in Bangalore, India tonight because of his job and because of what he's doing. He earned his MBA from 
UT Pan Am in 1984. And unlike some of the others, he went on to become an academic. He taught at Emory for a long time and was a member of the business school there. And while he was still in academia, he started consulting. He consulted with, I've got to read this, IBM, Coca-Cola, Lockheed Martin, Corning Corporation, Pfizer, Dow Chemical, Sony Corporation. He consulted with so many that by 2002, IBM had to hire them himself. And so they hired them and brought him in there because they needed somebody who could take on that key global role. Today's with Cisco systems. And if any of you have watched any ads, you've seen all of the ads about Cisco systems, and you know what it's doing to help communication with the internet across the world. He's the president of globalization and smart connected communities. I, I'm proud to be the president of UT Pan Am, but to be the president of smart connected communities, that's pretty nice, isn't it? Okay, he co-leads all of Cisco's globalization efforts and he has been a wonderful example for all of us of what we can do with our degrees here from this university. Dr. Jackie Michelle will accept on his behalf. She is the Director of Innovation and Intellectual Property and Research Department and from what I understand you worked with Dr. Menon so please come to us. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Anil, I'd like to express my appreciation to all of you. He's very disappointed he couldn't be here, but he promised that he will come again in the future and visit. It's been some time since he's been here, as he's been quite a world traveler. I actually worked with uh, Anil for almost two and a half years before I had any idea that he was from, uh, he had gotten his MBA from UTP, from Pan Am at the time. And uh, we only found out by accident because we'd been working on several strategic planning projects together and my husband had been recruited to the faculty here and one day we were driving to the airport and he was dropping me off and he asked me where I was headed to that time and I said I was going to uh, Edinburgh, Texas and he said I went to school there and I was quite surprised because you know you don't ex when, when my husband was first recruited here I hadn't unfortunately heard of uh, Edinburgh, Texas until he was recruited here but I was so excited to meet him and to hear him share his story. And he was an, uh, at Emory University and was head of the marketing program there at the time. And he was, he's just a delightful gentleman and a tremendous role model who's achieved a lot from uh, a, also a very uh, difficult uh, upbringing. And so I hope that you all get an opportunity to meet him in the future and again experience uh, his wonderful personality and hopefully some of our students can meet him and learn about what he's doing and they can see pathways to opportunity such as the ones that he's been able to achieve. So thank you. Our next inductee is Javier Palomares. I got to meet him on the second week that I was at this university. I went to the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and there was a special meeting and he was how many days onto the job? About 44 days. About 44 days onto his new job. He is the president and CEO of the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce in Washington, D.C. Not bad for a UT Pan Am person, right? <laughs> he advocates for nearly three million Hispanic-owned businesses. Now think about that. That's three million Hispanic-owned businesses in America that he's advocating for. And he's one of the top persons in multicultural sales. You know what else? He's a high school dropout, OK? And what he did is he went back and he got his GED and he's got his d degree. He grew up the youngest of 10 children of a single mother, OK? And he succeeded in what he was doing. And he succeeded as a migrant farm worker, OK? 
He's in Washington, D.C. today, folks, because he wanted to do it and he wanted to make it work. He worked at Allstate. He created the first marketing plan for them for Hispanics. And he was successful there. And he went to Sprint because they needed somebody to be able to market in the same way. And he went on. And then he went on to ING. And if you saw all the Super Bowl ads and that, you know what ING is. So you know how important it is. But he went there for a special reason. That was for diversity outreach programs, OK? He's responsible for marketing and public relations and external relations. He's a global leader in what we're doing today. And today he's sought out by Business Week, by Wall Street Journal, by USA Today. He's everywhere. Y también es un amigo. Good evening. It's nice to meet everybody here, and thank you for being here tonight. And uh, Dr. Nelson, thank you so much, Dr. Edwards, and uh, fellow honorees. I'm humbled to be here tonight. Uh, I really don't have anything special. There's nothing special about my story other than I married the right girl, and I've been fortunate enough for 26 years to hold on tight. And uh, she's right here, thank God. Um, other than that, I'll, I'll acknowledge that I, that I stand on the shoulders of so many that came before me. Uh, my family, my friends, uh, all of them with their prayers, their help, and their uh, enthusiasm that put me where I am today. And uh, I think that all of us have a responsibility to pass it on to the next generation. Thank you very much, and I'm glad and honored to be here tonight. Thank you. I'm told in those boxes are diamonds, okay? <laughs> I'm a little worried about that because we just went through a $7.4 million cut, <laughs> thanks to the governor, but um, we won't go there, okay? Our final honoree is Tim Tully. I got to meet him today, and I got to meet his wife today, and I want you to know that he met his wife by chasing her down on 10th Street, okay? <laughs> He was a star baseball player under Coach Al Ogletree. Al, are you out here, Coach Ogletree? I know he's here tonight. <laughs> Coach Ogletree is putting me to sleep each night. He gave me his book, and I'm reading a chapter each night before I go to bed, and it's been a real honor. Tully was a baseball star under Coach Ogletree and a member of the 1971 College World Series championship team. How many of the members of that team are out here? How many of the baseball players are out here tonight? <laughs> that entire team was inducted into the Hall of Fame for UTPA, and it's amazing. What my card tells me up here is that, um, that Tully graduated in physical education. What I learned from his wife is that he actually had a minor in business, and he almost didn't graduate because of his wife. What he did is enroll in a typing class so he could get the second date with her and get to know her and everything else. And he dropped the class after he got the date. Since then, he's gone on to be very successful. He figured it out as he was going along. And he worked with Ridgeway Ripper Graphics Company until he founded his own print, commercial printing press. And it's Southwest Precision, Precision Printers LP in Bel Air, Texas. And he has been very successful. And kids, he's more proud of you than he is proud of anything that he's ever accomplished. He runs one of the largest commercial printing companies in the country. It has won all sorts of awards, a People Choice Award, three Best Division Awards, 2007 Awards, 13 Awards of Excellence, and he won a Benny, whatever a Benny is, and that must be a big deal because I'm supposed to congratulate you on it. <laughs> 
But what I know is that this is a man who has been dedicated to UT Pan Am and has come back and his son played baseball here and he has come back a time and time again to help this university, to support this university and to support the students here. And we are very grateful to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I'm honored to be here. I'm honored to be here with, with all these scholars, and uh, I, I don't think I quite fall in, in the category of most of these people. Uh, Coach Al brought me down here in 1968. Uh, I'm not sure where I was going at the time. He, he said it looked like Miami, so come on. And, and uh, he told a lot of people that, and they all came. We, we, <laughs> We all uh, got along pretty good and ended up winning a lot of baseball games. <laughs> and uh, we had a lot of fun doing it. And uh, it's just been a, a treasure for me to be associated with uh, all these people that I love. A lot of them are here tonight. Uh, Reggie Treadaway and his wife, Sandra, great friends. We came down here the same week. Uh, Dick Tate on the basketball team came down here the same week I did in 68. Colonel Stan Bain out there. That We all uh, met each other the same week in 1968, the same year that Coach Al came and that Reggie came. Uh, Danny Wills, one of my roommates, is, is, is here tonight. And, and Mike Duffy, one of our great players and great friends, great fishermen, uh, is here. My family. Uh, I just want to thank all my kids. I, I've had two, two weddings I've had to put together. Well, really, it was my wife that put them all together. <laughs> but she had to put the, the two weddings together in the last, in eight weeks. And these four young people here on the, on the front row, each uh, uh, got married uh, eight weeks apart. So we've had a lot of fun in the last couple of months. Trevor, his wife, Jen, and my daughter, Taryn, and her husband, Kyle McCulloch. Uh, I want to thank them, my wife, Barkla, we, we did. I chased her down on 10th Street 38 years ago, 39 years ago. And, and uh, uh, you know, I did a little research on, on that, on her class schedule, enjoying that typing class. And I think I got it up to about 12 words a minute before I dropped it. <laughs> And it almost cost me uh, graduating, so you know, I wasn't very smart. But uh, it, it's just been great coming back here through the years. My wife, of course, is here. Her mother, Marianne Bruce, is here. And her good friend, Mildred Heflin, a long time McAllen resident, Coach, Coach Al and his wife, Joanne, just, you know, they're just so special to me through the years. And everybody that played for Coach Al, what a treasure he is. Now, uh, with the, 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 my whole story really is all about what happened one, once Coach Al asked me to come down here, you know. I, we, we went through and played ball and I met, met my wife and on our wedding day I had a friend uh, uh, ask me where I was going to work and what I was going to do and I said I'm going to Dallas and get me a job and he got me a job, this fella, and, and uh, we, got, we moved to Houston and, and uh, worked there for four years, the Ridgeway Company, and started our business in, in 75. And we've been, uh, as Coach Al says, uh, during our games, he said, boys, let's just peck away. It'll all work out. And I, we've been pecking away for 38 years in the print business. And, and so it's been a lot of fun and uh, a lot of changes through the years. But we've really enjoyed it. And we've always come back to Pan Am. We've always tried to do what we can, mostly through the athletic department in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and all through the years and uh, there's been a connection here that I will treasure all my life and and uh, it, it's just been great and the people down here are great a lot of our friends uh, still live down here and uh, it, it's a wonderful place so I just want to thank everybody Let's thank the school for this honor it means a lot to me uh, to be up here with 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 uh, all these very successful people, and, and uh, this is an honor that I'll never forget. Thank you very much.
now you can understand after these wonderful stories of success, you can understand why we want to highlight alums like this for our own students to be inspired. Congratulations again to all the honorees and thank you for all that you've done to make our university the highly regarded university which it has become. And thank you for your attendance at this special evening. We ask that you maintain your place and allow us to unveil the pillars. Each honoree will be escorted by a UTPA student to the appropriate panel. I will tell you that the honoree and the family members will have opportunities later for family pictures and for pictures with our president, Dr. Nelson, later in the evening. Uh, I will tell you also that we are proud not only of our former students, but we're proud of our current students. And I will call each student's name and the student will come forth and uh, get the escort the uh, honored alum to the appropriate panel. Ms. Terry Thomas is a sophomore majoring in sociology and is from Montgomery, Alabama. Ms. Thomas will unveil our introductory panel. And, and uh, to let you know, we're going to unveil, once the uh, uh, honorees are in place, we're going to ask the student to unveil all of the panels at one time, and then we'll, we will have photographic opportunities. Mr. Jorge Castro is a sophomore majoring in marketing uh, and is from Mission, Texas, escorting Ms. Dina Isa de la Vina to honor her father, Chief Gustavo de la Vina. Ms. Brenda Ramirez is a junior majoring in English from Westlaco, Texas, escorting Dr. Dana M. Gonzalez. <laughs> Mr. Ricardo Gonzalez is a freshman majoring in manufacturing engineering and is from Mexico City, escorting Jackie Michelle for Dr. Anil Mignon. Ms. Liliana Cantu is a junior majoring in public relations and is from Roma, Texas. She's going to have to stand in place, but she, we will ask uh, uh, Mr. Javier Palomares to join her at the appropriate panel. <laughs> Ms. Salema Torres is a freshman majoring in kinesiology and is from Mercedes, Texas. She will escort Mr. Tim Tully. We are ready. for your support of UT Pan American and your support of our students. Have a good evening. <laughs>